The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you life-giving water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go. Call your husband and come back. The woman answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. Jesus answered her, You are right in saying I do not have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true, the woman said to him. Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand, because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking with you. The woman left her water jar and went into the town and said to the people, Come, see a man that told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified, He told me everything that I have done. Many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word. For we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. This weekend, the third weekend of Lent, begins a three-week series of stories that are proclaimed each year for the elect, those men and women who will enter the Catholic Church through the rite of Christian initiation at the Easter Vigil. The three stories include the woman at the well, the blind man who was healed, and the raising of Lazarus from the tomb. Each of these stories is a compelling example of healing, conversion, and restoration. They are sacred moments when we witness God's power transform our lives or the lives of someone we love. These metanoia events are sometimes referred to as a mountaintop experience or simply a God moment. It is also worth mentioning that God moments are not only found in the early church, as people have similar experiences even in our day. 
I've heard stories about a parent who had an overwhelming sense that their child was in imminent danger. Then, after praying for the child's protection, later discovered that the child miraculously avoided some calamity. Or the person who became lost, only to discover an unexpected stranger passed by who provided the exact help needed to get that person safely to their destination. Perhaps some of us have heard miraculous stories about people who received physical or emotional healings that defy scientific explanation. Of course, there are some people who would quickly dismiss these God moments as a random coincidence. But our faith assures us that God the Holy Spirit is actively involved in our lives, even when we may not be fully aware of it. To illustrate my point, I would like to share a true story about a man that I first met over 25 years ago. Bill was a clinical psychologist and a proud member of law enforcement in the New York City Police Department. Bill described his work to be a God-directed vocation to protect the mental health of uniformed officers under his care. Of no less importance, Bill was a Catholic, and he considered daily Mass a priority each day, asking God to provide him with the exact spiritual gifts that he needed to do his job well. As Bill and I talked, he shared a number of God moment stories, those times when Bill knew without question that God inspired him with just the right words at exactly the right time to help fellow officers who struggled with PTSD, clinical depression, or troubled relationships in their lives. Here is just one of Bill's many stories. It was a late Friday afternoon when Bill returned to his office after a full day of scheduled appointments. Bill planned to stay late that night to finish his paperwork. When a young officer, I shall call Tom, stopped by Bill's office to announce his surprise that Bill was still at work. Bill recognized Tom as a rookie officer with less than two years on the job and made a lighthearted remark about his busy day. Then Bill heard something that he describes as an interior voice prompt him to ask Tom about how the job was going. After receiving a pat answer, Bill further sensed that Tom was in imminent danger. So he asked Tom to have a seat so they could talk for a few minutes. As Tom entered the room to sit in a chair, Bill quietly asked God to give him the exact words that Tom needed to hear. And then Bill compassionately spoke these words. Tom, were you planning to take your own life tonight? In shock, Tom stared at Bill for what seemed like an eternity. And then Tom responded, How did you know? Bill quietly responded, Tell me why you think that is the only choice you have. The young officer began to sob as he explained how his marriage had run into a ditch, how he felt like a failure as a husband, and how his wife would have a better life without him. Tom further explained that when he came to work that morning, he designed to take his gun at the end of the day and travel to a remote location to end his life. Tom further added, I was headed out of the building to do just that when I saw your office light on, and something inside me almost pushed me to go to your office and talk to you. Bill invited Tom to pray with him, and so they did. Bill reminded Tom that God had a good purpose for his life, and that together they would work to help Tom resolve his issues and to reconcile with his wife. The result of that God moment between Bill and Tom not only saved Tom's life that night, but it also began a healing process that saved his marriage. In subsequent years, Tom went on to receive numerous medals of commendation for valor as that young officer demonstrated heroism in saving a number of lives in Manhattan. Bill's story is a present-day example of what God can do in and through our lives when we open ourselves to be an instrument that God can use for restoration, conversion, and healing. Today's Gospel presents us with another God moment. 
We hear about a Samaritan woman who is living on the edge of her society, rejected by five husbands. She lived as a punching bag of local gossip as she was ostracized by the other women in her community. In her humiliation, the woman was relegated to collect water in the midday heat. Even as she approached Jacob's well, her anxiety heightened as she saw a Jewish man sitting there and feared that he might cause her physical or emotional abuse. And then her God moment occurred. Jesus spoke just four short words, give me a drink. The woman was stymied. What is going on here? Why is a Jew asking me for a drink? Surely he knows that I'm a Samaritan. The woman's response was a mixture of indignation, questions, comments, and complaints, as she said. How can you ask me for a drink? Are you greater than Jacob, who made this well? Show me this life-giving water you speak of, so I can avoid coming here each day to draw water. Finally, the woman revealed her greatest desire, her deepest thirst. I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. He will tell us everything. With her declaration, Jesus knew she was ready to receive his life-changing words. I am he, the one speaking with you. Immediately, the woman was restored. Her faith became alive with hope and wonder. Here was a man, the Messiah she so longed for, who transformed her life in that God moment. Her conversion was so profound that she left her water jar, rushed into the village, telling everyone she met, come and see a man who told me everything I have done. Her words stirred the heart of many Samaritans who set out to see and hear Jesus for themselves. They too had a God moment, a conversion, as they professed truly, this is the Savior of the world. My brothers and sisters, the life struggles faced by Tom and that woman at the well are replicated in many of our lives even today. Some of us have tried hiding behind a mask, a facade, hoping that no one will notice our pain. Yet our conscience is not at peace. We've spent years drinking from a well of bad relationships, a well of drug or alcohol abuse, a well of pornography, a well of cheating in our relationships and our business practices, or a well that serves only me, myself, and I. And yet we know deep in our heart that these things have failed to satisfy our deepest thirst. That is why the church leads us on a yearly Lenten journey, because it affords us yet another opportunity to place ourselves in the presence of Jesus and get brutally honest with him, to push our reset button and invite Jesus to come into our hearts and to do what we, for whatever reason, have been unable to do. And so today, let us pray that every person who enters the doors of the Church of St. Luke might experience their God moment, their metanoia, and drink deeply from the life-giving water that Jesus speaks of. May God use our parish family as his instrument to help those who have lost their way, to discover or rediscover the sacraments of the church, to be reconciled with Jesus, the Son of God, who alone can lead us to eternal life.